Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Arjun Chaudhary. We are on the top story that we're tracking for you on Friday, the 2nd of October. Give up terror before peace talks, India tells Pakistan at the UN. India pledges to cut carbon emission by over 30% by the year 2030. And Bollywood gives a fun ride to fans with seeing his bling this weekend. And now for all the details. India has rejected a four-point formula proposed by Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif for peace between the two countries. Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj called upon Pakistan to eschew terrorism first before holding talks. Indian Foreign Minister Sushma Swaraj responded to Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif's four suggestions with a single point, give up terrorism. Addressing the UN General Assembly on Thursday, the Indian Foreign Minister said New Delhi remained committed to holding talks with Islamabad on all outstanding issues. Swaraj said Pakistan was yet to act on its promises as the perpetrators of the 2008 Mumbai terror attacks, including Hafiz Saeed and Zaki Rahman Lakhvi, continued to roam free. We cannot accept any terrorist attacks in the in हमलों में केवल भारत के नागरिक नहीं, बल्कि अनेक देशों के निर्दोष नागरिक बड़ी बेहरमी से मार दिए गए थे। मैं समझती हूँ कि अंतरराष्ट्रीय समुदाय के लिए अपमान की बात है कि इन हमलों की योजना बनाने वाला आतंकवादी सरयाम खुला घूम रहा है। she also pointed out that Pakistan continued to support anti-India militant groups despite its repeated promises to curb cross-border terrorism. सीमा पार से हाल ही में भारत में नए हमले हुए हैं। दो हमलों में तो हमने सीमा पार के दो आतंकवादी जिंदा पकड़े हैं। हम सब जानते हैं कि ये हमले भारत में अस्थिरता फैलाने और भारत के जम्मू और कश्मीर राज्य के कुछ हिस्सों पर पाकिस्तान द्वारा किए गए अवैध कब्जों को वैध बनाने और शेष पर उसके दावे को पुष्ट करने के उद्देश्य से किए जा रहे हैं। Pakistan Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif had in his address to the UN on Wednesday proposed four points including demilitarization of Kashmir and Siachen and formalization of border ceasefire. India on Friday pledged that it would cut the intensity of carbon emissions by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 levels. The government announced this as part of its climate change policy ahead of a crucial UN summit in Paris in December. The Indian Environment Ministry unveiled the intended nationally determined contribution which outlines the government's action plan on combating climate change. India promised to make its economy more energy efficient and cut the carbon produced per unit of GDP growth by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 from 2005 levels. The government also said it would target 40% cumulative installed power capacity from non-fossil fuel sources by 2030. balanced It's comprehensive and balanced and it includes adaptation, mitigation, finance, technology, capacity building. It covers all pillars. India's per capita emission in 2030 will remain lower than the current global average of developed nations, which is 9 metric tons of CO2 equivalent. India, which is the third largest emitter of greenhouse gases after China and US, plans a five-fold boost in renewable energy capacity in the next five years to 175 gigawatts by tapping solar power, wind, biomass and small hydropower dams. The development comes ahead of the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change to be held in Paris in December 2015, where countries would try to forge a new global climate agreement. According to the estimates, around $2.5 trillion will be required for meeting India's climate change actions between 2015 and 2030. India on Friday paid rich tributes to the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, on his 146th birth anniversary. 
It was a day to remember his selfless struggle which led India to freedom in 1947. Leaders cutting across party lines came together to pay tributes to the father of the nation, Mahatma Gandhi, on his 146th birth anniversary. President Pranam Mukherjee, Vice President Hamid Ansari, Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Congress Party President Sonia Gandhi were among the others present at his memorial in New Delhi to pay homage to the great leader. India also observes Gandhi's birth anniversary as a day of non-violence, an ideal that Gandhi fought for throughout his life. Gandhi led India to freedom in 1947 from British rule on the principles of truth and non-violence. The day was also marked across the country with various awareness programs and exhibitions. In southern Bengaluru city, 4,605 students came together dressed in the famous attire of the Mahatma to pay tribute to him, creating a new world record. Moving on to some news from Sri Lanka. The country has agreed to cooperate with the UN in establishing a credible probe agency into the war crimes allegations against its army. The world body had on Thursday adopted a consensus resolution to promote accountability, reconciliation and human rights in the island nation. Sri Lanka has welcomed a UNHRC resolution calling for probe into rights abuses during the civil war with Tamil separatists. The decision was hailed by several countries including India, the UK, the US and advocacy groups like the Amnesty International. The resolution called for the establishment of a credible judicial process with the participation of foreign judges, lawyers and investigators. Sri Lanka is pleased to join as a co-sponsor of this resolution as a further manifestation of Sri Lanka's commitment to implement the provisions of the resolution in a manner that is objective, are shared by the people and all stakeholders in the country for their benefit. We are eager to commence wide-ranging consultations for this purpose as soon as possible in a manner to expand the ownership of its content to all its stakeholders. Sri Lanka has for long faced international criticism for its reluctance to allow an international probe into the alleged atrocities committed by its army. But the new government in Colombo has shown more openness and promised cooperation in the probe, even though it maintains that only a domestic mechanism can bring closure to the issue. The Lankan army is accused of large-scale human rights violations, especially in 2009 during the end of the nearly three decades long civil war with the Tamil Tigers. Various rights groups claim that up to 40,000 Tamil civilians were killed in the final three months when the army launched a massive operation to crush the rebels. Pakistan has asked foreign aid organizations operating in the country to renew the registrations within two months. This comes amid a crackdown on aid groups, accusing them of working against the interests of Pakistan. Pakistan government has issued a set of new directives to NGOs operating in the country. From now onwards, these organizations will not be allowed to operate without the prior approval and security clearance from the government. They have also been mandated to sign an MOU with the government in their fields of operation for three years. Foreign aid groups have also been banned from funding local NGOs or collecting funds from Pakistan. Interior Ministry said the policy was framed to address national security concerns. इस पॉलिसी के बाद बाद किसी ऐसे काम की इजाजत नहीं होगी जो पाकिस्तान के माली, इक्तसादी, स्ट्रेटेजिक, नेशनल या सिक्योरिटी इंटरेस्ट के मनाफी हो। हम सब कुछ ट्रांसपेरेंट और ऑनलाइन करें। The new guidelines are expected to make the operation of international groups even more difficult. Already they face many problems, including restrictions on their free movement and allegations of espionage. In June, the government had asked international aid group Save the Children to leave the country in 15 days for its alleged links with the operation that led to the killing of Osama bin Laden, a charge which the NGO has denied. The country had also de-recognized some 3,000 local aid groups in December 2014. Meanwhile, in Afghanistan, Hundreds continue to flee their homes in northern Kunduz despite government claims that the province is under its control. Meanwhile, the militia has taken control of many areas in Badakhshan province in the country's northeast. 
Taliban gunmen reportedly took control of Bardoch district in Badakhshan late on Thursday after heavy fighting. This came days after the insurgents stormed Kunduz in a surprise attack. Even though the government said that it had reclaimed Kunduz, the militia said it was still resisting the army and was in control of most parts of the city. As the fighting escalates, the locals are bearing the brunt. Many have fled for safety. Meanwhile, a former Mujahideen commander in Kunduz has come out in support of the government to fight the Taliban. از 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 تمام افغانستان به خصوص از از پران کاپوسا و پنشیر آماده به به نبرد جنگ علیه دشمن و طالبان دارم In capital Kabul hundreds held a protest march against the Taliban many also blamed neighboring Pakistan for the ongoing crisis مردم آزادی می خواهند مردم برابری می خواهند مردم عدالت می خواهند مردم یک افغانستان آزاد آباد جوفان مترقی و دموکراتیک می خواهند مردم افغانستان a resurgent Taliban is making significant gains at a time when the Afghan army is left by its own to defend the country. Afghan Chief Executive Officer Abdullah Abdullah had on Wednesday called for continued presence of NATO forces in the country even beyond 2016. Now to some news from Bangladesh. The country's cricket board on Friday questioned Australian cricket board's decision to postpone the bilateral test series. Australian cricket board had cited security concerns as a reason to delay the tour, which was scheduled to begin next week. Calling the decision unfortunate, Bangladesh cricket board chief Nazmul Hassan pointed out that the country has not witnessed a major terror attack over a decade. He also said that efforts are being made to have the series played in some time in the near future itself. The Australian team, which was scheduled to reach Bangladesh earlier this week, had delayed the departure the government warned of potential militant attacks. A wholesome family drama with a pinch of jaw-dropping actions. Bollywood delivers a roller coaster ride with Singh is Bling this weekend. Take a look. After giving the 2012 blockbuster Rowdy Rathor, the Akshay Kumar Prabhu Deva duo is back again with Singh is Bling. This time, the movie has actors Lara Datta and Amy Jackson to spice up the entertainment quotient. A directorial venture of Prabhu Deva, Singh is Bling is an action comedy that runs Laugh Riot till the end. जगहों पे जाती है, अलग-अलग मोड़ पे मुड़ती है। इसके अंदर वो सारे चीजें हैं जो हमारी ऑडियंस को बहुत अच्छी लगती है। मतलब ये एक ही जगह पे नहीं घूमती, सिर्फ जैसे थ्रिलर नहीं है। इसके अंदर थ्रिल भी है, इसके अंदर कॉमेडी भी है, इसके अंदर फैमिली वैल्यूज भी हैं। British origin Jackson, who has appeared in a handful of Indian films, was more than excited about her latest Bollywood venture. It's unbelievable, and, and to see that and to be a part of of this team, obviously with Prabhu sir and, and Akshay, uh, the Radio Rato duo is unbelievable to be a part of. So I'm very fortunate, we've got a great <laughs> producer and we've had a fantastic time shooting it and that is just spectacular, I didn't know what to expect, so it's wonderful. <laughs> Singh is Bling revolves around a happy-go-lucky man called Raftar Singh from India's northern Punjab who cannot focus on one thing. As he falls in love with a Romanian girl, language poses a great barrier in their story. What rolls then is a confusion-laden bandwagon of humour and entertainment. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Give up terror before peace talks, India tells Pakistan at the UN. India pledges to cut carbon emission by over 30% by the year 2030. And Bollywood gives a fun ride to fans with Singh is Bling this weekend. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com/SouthAsianNewsline. 
and follow us on Twitter at S Asia News Line. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.